compliments. Uh, officially, uh, it's just me giving the talk, but Rana did more or less the whole work as part of Google Summer of Code. So we did, he will give now a short presentation about uh, integrating LeapProfice with no documents, and then I will talk a bit about LeapProfice 5.0 and um, other new stuff that's going on in the LeapProfice world. that uh, LibreOffice is selling. Uh, uh, we are trying to adapt the LibreOffice functionality in a GTK3 widget so that uh, you can use this GTK3 widget in your applications. Uh, uh, at this point of time, this uh, GTK3 widget is also introspectable, so which means that you can also uh, use uh, this widget from any uh, bindings, such as Python or JavaScript. Um, uh, the final aim of this project is also to integrate this uh, widget with uh, GNOME documents. So uh, we'll be using GeoTech introspection and use it from JavaScript. Uh, I will also be showing you uh, the demo, how we can use, that, how we can do that. Uh, so uh, let's start with a bit of history. Uh, 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 last year, summer of code, Andreas Hunt laid the foundation of this project. So uh, he uh, wrote a rough uh, log block view, uh, this, the name of this widget. And, uh, but uh, the widget was quite not usable because uh, the document was uh, rendered as a single push style. Uh, so I don't think that it's acceptable to any applications because sometimes your document can be huge and if it's being rendered as a single push style, then it would take a lot of time to show it up on the screen. Uh, and then uh, in January this year, uh, we brought Svetna from Calabria uh, worked on this and uh, he um, changed the mo model behind this widget and uh, um, now the widget uh, used to render the document using the smaller tiles, the 256 into 256 pixel styles, but it would still render the whole document. Uh, so uh, I don't think there is need to uh, render the whole document. For example, if you have a huge document of uh, uh, say 100 of pages, then you don't need to render all of it at once. Uh, you can just do that, uh, render a few of the tiles that are visible on the screen, and uh, as the user scrolls down the window, uh, you can uh, start rendering other tiles uh, as per the demand. So, um, um, till, uh, before this summer of code, uh, the, this widget was still a GTK2 widget, it was not a GTK3 widget, and it used to block the main thread, so uh, all the LibreOffice calls that were used to, um, that were used to demand the uh, tiles from the other core uh, was uh, uh, in the main thread, so it kind of blocked the main thread, uh, and then, uh, uh, it could only be used from the application written in C and C++ because uh, it was not introspectable and uh, it used uh, not so idle way, uh, it used GTK table for render tiles, so uh, at the start of the document it would allocate a huge GTK table and then uh, uh, all the render tiles would go into the cells of that GTK table. Uh, so it required a lot of polishing. And uh, uh, this summer of code project was kind of three uh, community project uh, this time for me because uh, I uh, had to take some ideas from the already existing Mozilla style rendering uh, system. So um, uh, initially we were thinking of reusing the Mozilla's code base in the LibreOffice, but uh, finally we found out that uh, the Mozilla code was too interleaved and it was not possible to uh, use the Mozilla code base directly in LibreOffice. So, uh, I asked the Mozilla guys and uh, they made me understand how the tile rendering works and how I can implement that in LibreOffice. So, um, uh, I worked for a few weeks with the Mozilla guys and uh, they told me how I can do that in LibreOffice. So, now we have a working tile rendering system in LibreOffice. It has a tile buffer also. Uh, I will be showing you the architecture of the widget uh, in later slides. So, um, we went from Mozilla to LibreOffice and now wrapping whatever, whatever I did in a GTK3 widget so that you can use this GTK3 widget in your application. So, uh, uh, currently we are using this GTK3 widget in GNOME documents. And it also kind of works but needs a little bit of polishing before it gets merged to master. Um, so, uh, let's talk about a simple bit, uh, um, 
few introduction to uh, LibreOffice Git. Uh, it's a very simple uh, C++, C, C++ API for LibreOffice. And it, it exposes all the core values for, of LibreOffice, such as file format filters and uh, especially the tile rendering system. Um, so for those of you who don't know what tile rendering is, it's like converting the huge document into small tiles or pixels so that uh, uh, you don't have to render the whole document at once. Um, it exposes the editing and selection functionalities and uh, uh, it has a very simple header only API, no linking is required. Uh, and uh, um, so uh, there are other clients also uh, at the present who are using this LibreOffice kit, such as LibreOffice Online, uh, LibreOffice Android, and uh, Allocon. Allocon is also built on this. So uh, this is the uh, simple uh, place where the uh, widget currently resides in the uh, LibreOffice uh, source tree. Uh, so uh, this is the uh, uh, the log.view.cxx is the main widget file, uh, and uh, the type buffer is the new addition that I made this summer, uh, so that the type buffering is a little bit faster, uh, and you don't have to uh, call the LibreOffice core every time you want to show something on the screen. It kind of it, it's kind of caching. So uh, uh, besides that, there's a GDK tile viewer. It's kind of test back for the for uh, testing this functionality. So uh, whatever we uh, whatever new additions we make in log doc view, uh, we firstly test that in GDK tile viewer, and uh, then we uh, uh, I mean uh, we make sure that there are not there are no regressions there. So. So uh, as I already told, tile rendering, uh, it uh, divides the documents into smaller tiles and uh, render these small tiles independently based on demand. It's kind of unstable as of now, so you have to use this macro, uh, use allocate, use unstable API, and uh, only bitmap of free rendering as of now, with 32 bit RGB color space. So uh, this is a small slide that I stole from Michael Hicks, uh, showing about the uh, tile rendering, uh, tile rendering concept. So um, uh, uh, that is the visible reason that uh, is currently being displayed on the tablet or on your screen or whatever device you are using. And uh, the other tiles are already pre-rendered for you, so that when you uh, scroll down the screen or zoom in or zoom out, so you don't have to see. Uh, a lag and uh, these tiles are automatically shown uh, to you instantaneously. So uh, this is all about the tile rendering and uh, uh, so now uh, let's talk about the communication that happens between the uh, LibreOffice client and the Allo code in the back end. So it's a kind of two way channel. Um, the communication between the Allo client, uh, the LibreOffice script client and the Allo core uh, is initialized with uh, these uh, function calls, like uh, you first have to call initialize for rendering, which kind of prepares the LibreOffice core for rendering and all that stuff, so that uh, you can uh, later ask the LibreOffice core for uh, the tiles that you want uh, to show, it, show on the screen. And uh, besides that, there are some other basic functionality like post mouse event and post key event, uh, so, so that uh, all your mouse hits and all your key events uh, gets interpreted via the LibreOffice code and it acts accordingly. Uh, and uh, the LibreOffice code interacts with the allocate client using the callbacks. Uh, for example, these are a few important callbacks. There are many callbacks, but I am only mentioning a few uh, callbacks uh, which are very important. For example, there is this allocate callback in validate tiles, which means that uh, which uh, signals the um, LibreOffice uh, kit client so uh, that it should drop all the, it, it should validate all the tiles. Uh, and should ask for the new tiles. Um, then there is a, a invalidate visible cursor, which means that uh, you need to change the position of the, your cursor. Um, uh, you, need, you need to change the position of your cursor in the overlay uh, in the applications that you are using. And then there is this uh, allocate callback text selection, uh, which means that you need to uh, make some modifications in your applications overlay and show something, show a different overlay rectangle than currently. Uh, being displayed. Uh, so the existing client is this GDK tile viewer, which is a test application inside the Allo source code tree. Then there is LibreOffice Android. Then uh, LibreOffice Online is also using this uh, functionality in the backend. Then there is Unicorn Python front end for LibreOffice document conversion. Uh, so all these uh, clients are uh, currently using the LibreOffice kit as of now. 
So uh, this is the uh, architecture of the widget that I have written. Um, so uh, the main widget is there, uh, allocate doc view. Uh, so there is this G thread pool. Uh, initially, uh, before the start of this uh, summer, uh, this uh, widget uh, didn't use any uh, multi-threading. So I, uh, now all the allocate calls are being uh, called from this uh, separate thread pool, which consists of a single thread. Um, so uh, whenever you have to uh, contact to the LibreOffice code, you you uh, ask the thread that uh, keeps listening to all the calls in the thread pool. So uh, that that, th that thread then interacts with the LibreOffice code, and uh, whatever LibreOffice code, however LibreOffice code responds, it uh, goes back to the uh, lock log view. So um, and all the tile rendering requests first goes via a tile buffer, which acts like a cache, which acts like a cache, and it sees that it, if it has already a, a render tile in its cache, then it uh, uh, instantaneously give it back to the log log view, and if it feels that the tile is already the tile is already invalidated, so it again uh, asks this single thread this thing for the task to uh, uh, to render a new tile, and then that thread will uh, ask the of his core to render it for the log log view, and then this way the communication happens. So uh, this type buffer is a kind of cache which uh, makes. Uh, things a little bit faster in this case. And uh, uh, and the reason that we are using single thread here instead of multi instead of multiple threads is that because the LibreOffice core is a kind of a single thread and uh, it would be uh, useless to use more than one thread in this case because uh, the LibreOffice core is written in uh, single thread only. So uh, these are the example APIs that are um, currently presenting uh, this widget. For example, uh, if you uh, you need to get the context first, the LibreOffice, con the, the log doc view context first, which, I, which you can do with log doc view new, and uh, it implements GI Netable interface, so uh, if it fails, uh, the, I mean, uh, the, the instantiation can fail, so uh, you will get to know that uh, uh, you, are, you cannot uh, get a widget instance at this moment. So, if you want to open a new document, then uh, the simple API, log doc view open document, and uh, there are some other functionalities also, like if you want to set a zoom level, then simple set zoom. If you want to get the zoom level, then get zoom. And uh, this is a very important command, this log doc view post command, because it lets you directly uh, um, do almost anything that you can do with uh, UNO commands. So, you can directly write the UNO command as arguments to this function and uh, it would interact with the LibreOffice code and the LibreOffice code would do the desired thing for you. And then there are two modes of this widget. So a uh, log doc view, set edit, if you want to uh, get the editing functionality in your widget, so you can call this function and it would uh, uh, set your set the widget in the edit mode. And But if you only want to view the things, then you can set uh, the editing functionality to uh, false, so it would only show you what's uh, it will only show you the document and uh, uh, would not let you the edit the document. So, uh, um, there are some uh, future plans we have, like uh, we, are, we are thinking of using OpenGL for rendering, so uh, maybe use the latest GTK GL area for this, uh, but uh, I'm not sure about this, I haven't looked uh, how it, uh, it may, how it would work, so uh, maybe uh, we need to uh, have a look at this new widget in uh, GNOME 3.16 onwards. Uh, and uh, uh, maybe better tile buffering algorithms because uh, currently it's a very basic algorithm, like it kind of caches, ca caches all the tiles, so uh, nothing more than that. And uh, uh, currently uh, uh, we, need, we also need to ship the JIR and TypeDiv files that are used for uh, GeoGraph introspection. Currently it doesn't ship uh, the, uh, these introspection files, so uh, we are planning to ship these files to the distribution so that it can be used with any widget. Uh, if you want to use it from C, it's kind of very simple, uh, like you can just directly do uh, log doc view new, so it will give you a new context, and if you want to open a document, then use that uh, context and give a document path, and it will open a new document for you. Um, for example, uh, this is the uh, application that I wrote in JavaScript to uh, test the uh, introspection functionality and uh, it works. So, uh, 
yeah, it's quite simple to use also. Uh, the um, parent class of this uh, lock talk view is the GTK drawing area. So you have to uh, uh, you have to wrap the GTK drawing area in in your uh, scroll window so that uh, and then the GTK drawing area would automatically uh, detect what are the what is the visible uh, reason and would only render the tiles that it needs to. Uh, uh, I also have a demo to show so. So, for example, uh, this is the uh, this is the GDK tile viewer, which is a test bed, and it lives uh, uh, in the LibreOffice uh, direct in the LibreOffice source code tree. So, um, yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, if you want to edit something. Yeah, so this is currently edit mode. If you want to set it on view mode, you can click this and now it is in view mode. The tiles are being rendered on demand. Uh, so uh, not all the tiles are rendered right now. As you are going down, the tiles are being rendered at that moment. So, but they are cached. So if you go up and down now, so it would be kind of smooth now. So it works with uh, all the functionality that you can see in the desktop of office application. And uh, you can also zoom faster. Uh, earlier, the zoom used to be very slow because uh, uh, at a very high zoom level, and uh, uh, if your document is huge, then it would uh, it would like render billions of tiles. But uh, at the moment, it only renders uh, the tiles which are visible. So even at a very high zoom level, it would render quite fast and uh, would render only tiles that are visible on the screen. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so uh, I have a feature branch also uh, uh, in the LibreOffice code directory, in the LibreOffice code Git directory, feature this of tile rendering. So uh, if you want to have a look at that, you can uh, maybe uh, polish that widget a bit because uh, I uh, I feel we might need uh, uh, more G object hackers to hack on that so that uh, it uh, it kind of it gets polished before getting merged to master. So thanks a lot. It helps if you 
want to exchange uh, your documents with another program. Um, so there's some simple conditional formatting improvements. Uh, uh, you could use a gradient. Uh, you can now also use so solid bars. Um, yeah, the default length. These are two independent conditional formats. Here the maximum uh, width is 50% of the cell. Here it is 100%. So, so it's exactly the same data and you just define how, how long it should be. And you, you can hide the values here, uh, which makes it nicer to present the data if you don't care about the actual values. Uh, th there are quite some big spreadsheet formula improvements. We finally support table structure preferences. It was one of the major sources uh, of complaints when importing XLSX documents. It's a table inside a spreadsheet that, that has a specific name and that you can address through, through an old syntax. We support it during import, during export. But, um, we just write it out as normal formulas at the moment. Uh, Ike is working on fixing uh, a few more of these uh, bugs around table structure preferences and about supporting them correctly in ODF and during export. Um, Entire column row references are finally supported. We supported them uh, during import and export from OXML for some time. Uh, but, but you can now use them also in the UI, which makes it easier to address a, a whole column, a whole uh, row. It was a long requested feature. And uh, as, uh, in each uh, new release, we have a few new uh, formulas uh, improving our compatibility to uh, Microsoft Office and uh, implementing a few of the missing uh, open formula uh, formulas. Uh, the, the, this release, there were quite a few big changes to, to our rendering toolkit. Uh, for a long time, we were using direct rendering, so we were directly rendering what we had in the code uh, to the screen, which resulted in such nice dialogues that have been half drawn and you could see it. So here the, the two, this is correct, the name of the dialogue is correct, but you see for example here in the background, uh, background still uh, the uh, spreadsheet that was behind it, you see here part of the spreadsheet that was behind it. So as a user you could always see how, how a dialogue was updated. Now we have uh, for, for many or maybe master already most places switch to double buffer rendering so you draw to a, to a buffer and when you are finished with rendering you, you show the result um, it, it just avoids these ugly uh, frames where, where you see half a, ren uh, half a rendered dialogue um, the second big part is the idle handling so I saw a lot of uh, reviews mentioning that uh, LibreOffice feels faster or uh, snappier, it, it, it does not take that long. Uh, the idle handling is one of the big tasks here. It was implemented mostly by two students from the city of Munich, working there for half a year. Um, previously, we had fixed timeouts uh, that were signaling when we should render the next frame or when the resizing should be done. Uh, that's not now all done as part of in the main loop. As soon as we are idle and have some free time, we, we schedule uh, that task uh, and work on it. Um, we have different pri priorities uh, depending on how often it should happen, like uh, uh, painting should happen faster than uh, the resizing, so always more important. Uh, yeah, the, the result is that for a lot of tasks, um, another big task is the, the word count, uh, which was blocking uh, the uh, writer when you opened a big document for quite some time. And with this idle handling, it's now happening in the background uh, when, when LibreOffice has nothing else to do. So, so you, you, you scroll through your document, and uh, LibreOffice has to render a lot. Um, the, the word counting has a low priority, so we wait with the word counting until all these high priority tasks have been done, like re-rendering, 
uh, during the scrolling. And as soon as you stop again, the, the word counting continues until uh, all the words are counted. Um, we, we spent quite some time on code quality. Um, Graylan is here, our, our big hero. Um, he managed to put down uh, our coherency numbers to, to nearly zero. Um, um, the, the score is, has been uh, zero for quite some time now. Uh, we have more than 10,000 issues resolved. Uh, I think it's now about 13,000. Um, we do regularly crash testing. We import about, I think now it's 79,000 documents from different Vexilla instances like ours, um, the, the GNOME one, the KDE one, the Mozilla one. Uh, import them with, uh, with a really paranoid build, uh, assertions enabled. Um, the uh, standard template library is switched out for, for the debug one that has additional asserts. <coughs> and make sure that we, are, uh, we don't crash during import or during export. Um, you, you can see here where we started for, for the import crashes right around 150 uh, out of back then. 30,000 documents and how we are now down to zero. You also see some spikes from time to time uh, when someone introduced the regression, we noticed it and fixed it immediately again. Um, with the export, you see that the scale is totally different. We started with uh, 1,400 export crashes, uh, but we were also exporting about 150,000 documents. So each uh, document that we imported was exported to, to about uh, two or three different formats. Uh, and we are also down to zero here now. I think uh, since today uh, all import and export crashes have been fixed. There was quite some work on unit testing as with each release you can see uh, how the number of our CPP unit asserts has been constantly growing. Uh, the number of uh, tests has been growing as well. Um, yeah. Hopefully it results in a much better quality of the, the 5.0 in future releases. Uh, another big task uh, that we use and uh, that have been used extensively in the 5.0 release are compiler plugins. Uh, I, I picked some that, that look simple and that make it easy to understand how they help the code. Uh, a, a quite easy one is the simplified boon. Uh, something like this return B test, which is a Boolean variable. Uh, if, if it's true, return false, otherwise true. Oh, that should be a question mark. Uh, can, can of course be simplified, and maybe a compiler will do it, maybe it won't, but uh, of course the second version is easier to read. And, and there are even more complex ones that, that the, the C line um, compiler uh, can detect with our plugin. Other ones are, are detecting when we have marked a method uh, unnecessarily as virtual or uh, methods that don't access uh, class me uh, methods that don't access member variables and therefore could be static. Um, we use a lot of address sanitizer, even with our, our 78,000 documents. Uh, undefined behavior sanitizer, Stefan did a lot of work there. Uh, finding uh, integer overflows uh, and a lot of uh, other stuff. Uh, I, I, I've only seen how the, the commits are flying by. Um, we did some work with leak sanitizer, finding some of the memory leaks. But there's quite some work left. Um, if you want, you can join there. It's a tedious task. Um, you might have seen the, the announcement. We have an Android viewer. Uh, from TDF now, there's also one from Collabora. Uh, it, it was implemented by Collabora and, and some part was implemented by, I think, Galia. Uh, you can download or you can find it at the Play Store under this link up there. That's a screenshot uh, from my phone. Uh, I, I picked some, some Godzilla document. It works with uh, every document and you can view it. Um, I think as part of the tender, there was also some editing uh, implemented, but it's not enabled in the official Android builds yet. 
And the ninth thing there is, it uses the same stuff that, that Panas already mentioned, that this type rendering, LibreOffice kit. <coughs> so we share more or less the whole work and just put a different uh, UI on top of it, um, which makes uh, for a nice reuse of code. That the next thing does the same. It also again uses the type rendering, uh, the LibreOffice kit, and uh, LibreOffice. So LibreOffice Online, I think there was a big uh, presentation by Michael announcing uh, his prototype, uh, the first one. Uh, I think it was um, about three years ago or something like that. Yeah, I think he presented it a few times, but either at the, the Paris conference or at the next Boston, uh, he presented his prototype based on you know, Broadway. It was quite nice, but we realized, okay, um, it, it might not be the uh, best way to implement it, and uh, it has now been re-implemented based on the office here. Uh, there's a, a repository where um, the client side is developed, so the, the JavaScript library that interacts with the LibreOffice on the server, and the server part. Um, the, the advantage is, um, as soon as we discover that the user does not use um, the, the document anymore, but still has opened the window, you can just store the tiles and, and uh, close the, the document. So, so the tiles are still there, the, the user scrolls around in the document, and if he comes back, he can still open the document again. It's currently developed by Collabora and Icework. I think that they plan to have something usable by the end of the year. So, so watch out for some announcement there. I think it's a quite cool column, and you have a wrong value in there. So some other uh, cool sum of code tasks um, as part of document liberation. Anurag is implementing our Apple Numbers uh, filter. We get support for Haskell for, for our API. I suppose everybody always wanted to, uh, to use Haskell to, to split people office. Um, the, the Firebird replacement for our uh, HSQLDB database, hopefully that will give a, or help us get rid of some more Java code. Um, dynamic text training, so, so you have several text boxes uh, say, okay, if text overflows, it should flow into the next text box. Clean up internal kite point units, that's more some, something for uh, us poor kite developers that have to suffer uh, to uh, the different units that are used in the office, like uh, tens of millimeters, one hundred of uh, millimeter, and then points, um, trips, and so on. Uh, review of the sidebar and its functionality. It's mostly a UX work, so, so talking to our UX guys, making the, the sidebar easier to use uh, and implement some improvements there. And of course, uh, our common task, uh, more and better tests, implement some tests uh, for, for existing bug fixes. Um, then, I want to quickly talk about the document liberation project. Um, they are part of TDF now, uh, I think they are a bit older than a year now. And, and they, they implement uh, document filters for uh, obscure formats uh, that normally need to be reverse engineered, like uh, Microsoft Publisher, uh, Adobe Freehand, and so on. There are quite a few filters, uh, and they make it available for other projects. So normally, we would develop them inside LibreOffice, but as part of being an open source project, we should also contribute back. Um, so, so every project could just use them. They are MP MPL licensed, so, so compatible to uh, GPL projects, and, and allow you to, to uh, make use of, of all this knowledge that, that has happened inside the LibreOffice project for, for many years. 
um, how to contribute to LibreOffice. So uh, you pick, normally you start with easy hack. Um, the, the, the website uh, explains how to uh, build it, it's like uh, a simple step. And there's a list of well, there's some easy tasks that you can pick uh, that have a mentor assigned. Uh, and there are quite some uh, known tasks. So uh, Craylan most likely would see, like to see someone help him with the new GTK3 backend um, that he presented. There's quite some work left, uh, I suppose. Um, th th there's uh, some work that, that can be done to, to integrate it better into the GNOME desktop. Um, you can work on the uh, libraries provided by the Document Liberation Project. I mentioned the remote um, dialog feature. We, we have also a library called libcmis. CMIS is the standard that, that most of these document management projects use. Uh, even Microsoft supports it nowadays, which is quite surprising. Um, and it can be used and improved to support even more uh, providers. And uh, I wanted to point out the LibreOffice conference will happen in a bit more than a month in Athens, uh, Denmark. So if you want, you're more than welcome to join us there. Thank you for listening. And <laughs>